Welcome to this video and welcome to the new year. 2024 is here and this month's class is about detoxification for the new year for both your body and your home. So let's get started. Here's a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about in this video. Um, new Year's resolutions. We just finished the holiday period, including lots of food and drink we might not have been wise to eat or drink so much of. Um, we're going to talk about the realities pertaining to environmental toxins, a quick primer for how to do a detoxification program, and some specific recommendations. For those who may not be familiar with me and my background, I am a former engineer in the aerospace industry uh, who gave all that up because I was drawn to work in the field of natural and holistic medicine. Uh, you see a short list here on the screen and I have a much longer biography over on the website, drcadesays.org. Feel free to pause the video here if you'd like to read a little bit here and then we'll get going again. I read a study a while back that says most New Year's resolution are about health and fitness and of those by far the most common is the need to lose weight. The same report and others basically say that most New Year's resolutions will fail within the first 30 days and that's because they don't become habits. It takes time to create new habits. Lifestyle changes are the only way you can get healthier and lose weight. And most often the New Year's resolutions really don't involve an all-in commitment. Most people are starting them without proper knowledge and proper preparations. So whether your goal is losing weight or something else, most only focus on looking at calories and exercise. That's what I describe as an extremely last century model of calories in versus calories out as the primary method of weight loss. Uh, next month, the first Thursday um, presentation is in fact about weight loss programs that actually work. However, one of the first things we want to do is a detoxification program. In other words, we need to take out the trash so we have a clean space, i.e. body to work with. So um, that's just an admonition that, of why I put this detoxification uh, class together before the weight loss class. So once we hit the new year, right after New Year's Day, we the American public in general <clears throat> has just spent more than a month, maybe two months, doing our annual holiday ritual of what I call retoxification, toxifying our body again with the overconsumption of low quality food and drink, which is all nutrient deficient. The nutrient deficiencies allow toxins to accumulate in the body at a faster rate than normal and all the high sugars and bad fats in those foods work to suppress our immune system, leaving us more prone to opportunistic infections. So before we do anything over the course of the year to get healthier, to meet those New Year's resolutions, we need to clean our body out of toxins. We need to clean our homes out of toxins. We need to clean our minds and consciousnesses and get rid of outdated or inaccurate information on how to be successful in our health and wellness goals. So detoxifying our body and homes is a crucial and very often overlooked step in our quest for optimal health and longevity. So in addition to the possible holiday excesses, what else might we need to be aware of? Well, first up are toxins in the air that we breathe. We are not supposed to be breathing air that we can see. And so I've just pulled together a few representative uh, images here that shows a, 
a city that's so full of bad smog that you can't even see the city. Uh, diesel truck fumes in particular are very nasty. Other industrial fumes, things like carbon monoxide, lead particles, nitrogen oxides, excess ozone, sulfur dioxide, asbestos, benzene, and a host of other polyaromatic hydrocarbons, other particulate matter. This is what's in the air we breathe. It's not supposed to be coming into our bodies. The next major source of toxins we're exposed to constantly are toxins in our water supply. Um, toxins from sewage, excess nutrients or medications that are flushed down the toilet, other wastewater, household chemicals, industrial waste, chemical waste, radioactive waste in certain parts of the country, oil pollution. Here you see an image of somebody who changed their oil, drained it into the gutter, and now it's going down into a grate that will carry that wastewater and dump it into a river or ocean someplace. Maybe it's going through a water treatment plant first, but in many, many areas of the country, it's not. Plastic particles, Natural occurring chemicals or metals from the ground, so asbestos, copper. Here in the Bitterroot Valley of Montana, where I live, when I've done heavy metal testing on uh, patients, uranium is showing up frequently as a contaminant. I can only assume it's from the water supply. We don't have any nuclear reactors nearby. So that, that's my suspicion on uranium. But these are the things we're dealing with and why water purity is so important. Not only do we end up possibly drinking this type of water and bathing in this type of water, this is what we're watering our crops with. And then some of these chemicals and toxins get absorbed into the structure of the plant. You can't wash it off. And then we end up eating these. This is why organic farming is so important. This brings us up to the next major category of toxins that get into our body, and those are the toxins in foods. A um, couple of major groups here is the agricultural chemicals, such as bug killers, weed killers, fungus and mold killers, fertilizers. Genetically modified foods are actually programmed to make their own toxins inside their cells. So there's cross-reactivity that's been measured between the the toxins in GMO foods and getting into the natural bacteria in our GI tract and start we start producing pesticides in our own intestine, which is not good. Um, a variety of toxins are fed to or injected into livestock that we then consume. So uh, non-organic feeds fed to livestock, those poisons get incorporated into their bodies. And after the animal is butchered, we eat those toxins. Um, so those are a lot of the sources how toxin gets in our food. Very specific ones, glyphosate, also known by the trade name Roundup, is very bad cancer causing. Uh, most of these cause cancers at the worst end, disrupt our nervous system, disrupt our breathing system, disrupt our endocrine and reproductive systems, malathion, paraquat, carbamate, organophosphates, organochlorines banned in the U.S. but not everywhere, and we might be getting food from some of those places, pyrethroids. Uh, do, if you're interested, do read up on these, research them, just go to your favorite search engine, type these names in and see what kind of problems they actually cause. This brings us up to the hidden toxins, the ones we aren't really aware of. And these are the toxins that we find in our common household products. Uh, we spend, on average, the per, every person spends about half their life in your home. And if the products you're using in your home have toxins, well, guess what? When you walk through those big box stores, through the chemical aisles, um, as some stores actually refer to them, at the supermarkets, big box stores, a lot of people get headaches. And here's some of the reasons why. So feel free. If you want to read the fine print, I'm not going to read this to you, but these are all found in a lot of common household products. So formaldehyde, it's an ingredient in a lot of body care products. Uh, they use it to prevent bacterial growth, but it can cause cancer. Toluene, a solvent, it's often used in paint thinners, 
Um, this is one that is found in nail care products, hair dyes. Uh, pregnant women should absolutely positively not use it because it can cause birth defects, permanent birth defects. Propylene glycol, it's used as a de-icing agent on aircraft in the winter. You might find it in your shampoos. It causes skin irritation, sometimes severe, and dermatitis and rashes and things like that. It's a relative of automobile antifreeze. Parabens, preservatives, um, they really disrupt the hormonal system of women. They can cause breast cancer. So this is the first page of these toxins that we're looking at in your common household products. Continuing on, phthalates, um, breast cancer, early breast development, i.e. premature puberty, increased birth defects found in hairsprays, lotions, nail polishes, and so forth. Triclosan, antibacterial soaps, um, really disrupts the endocrine system, the reproductive system, and especially the thyroid gland. Ammonia, quaternary disinfectants, these are used in surgical hospitals, surgical rooms and hospitals really overkill um, severe lung and skin irritations possible chlorine beach phosphates uh, just just some more major categories so we we did a quick run through of household toxins and agricultural toxins here's some of the bad things that happen from short and long-term agricultural toxin exposures uh, you'll see the list of acute symptoms. These can show up from minutes to within hours or days of uh, being exposed. So down at the bottom of that, loss of consciousness and, and death can be uh, almost immediate for some people who may be more sensitive. Long-term cancers is, is a big one. Neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's, ALS, various dementias, seizures, and so forth. Reproductive system, birth defects, infertility, uh, miscarriages, dermatitis, many other skin conditions. So just a lot, a lot of bad things here. All right, now we are getting into the realm of, okay, toxins are bad. They're everywhere. They're hard to avoid. So what do we do about it? Uh, this is what I call the detoxification primer. Um, they're entering into our bodies at a faster rate than they can normally be cleared and eliminated by our body's detoxification and elimination organs. As a result, they start to accumulate in various body tissues and various organs, joint spaces, little pockets of connective tissues, less metabolically active areas, and they start to accumulate and become a source then that slowly spreads throughout the body. Um, the areas of your body that are most affected are the nervous system, the endocrine system, so all your hormone organs, the reproductive system, which is technically a subset of the endocrine system, because but we, we treat it separately because it's so crucial for the reproductive process. Uh, the immune system. So these, uh, we have just epidemic immune system suppression, we have epidemic toxins, and the toxins are one of the reasons why. So what a detoxification program is, is that for a relatively short, finite period of time, we're going to drastically decrease the amount of toxins entering your body, and at the same time, dramatically increase the amount of toxins that are leaving your body. We, we get to this goal by decreasing toxin-laden foods, eating a really ultra-clean diet. We use mostly foods that don't overload our digestive system. These foods have to be nutrient-dense. We stimulate our body's detoxification organs in a very particular order, which is important. And then we support the organs of elimination with specific foods, nutrients, herbs and other natural supplements. And we can stimulate the detox process to go a little better with what we call supportive therapies. This image here introduces a concept of your emunctories. 
A muncture is a term which means a pathway for elimination of wastes and toxins. So there's two kinds of toxins to be considered here, ordinary metabolic wastes as well as environmental toxins. So here at the upper left, all the cells of your body are generating waste as well as processing toxins, which eventually either it ends up directly in the bloodstream or into the lymphatic system and then the bloodstream and gets carried to the liver, which is the body's main detoxification filter. Fat soluble waste leave the body in the bile and then to the gallbladder, the GI tract, where they're supposed to be bound up with dietary fiber and leave the body in the stools. Water-soluble wastes end up going primarily to the kidney, the urinary bladder, and out in the urine. Some of them end up leaving the body in the lungs and the air, and some through the sweat glands on the skin. If the GI tract is not functioning properly, Toxins can get reabsorbed, go back to the liver, and make the problem even worse. So this is the quick overview of how toxins are supposed to leave the body. A detoxification program consists of a period of time where we open the amuncries. We make sure the GI tract is eliminating properly. We detoxify the colon. And then we open and detoxify the kidneys and urine bladder, urinary bladder, and then we enhance elimination through the skin and lungs. After those among trees are working better, then we start pushing the detoxification processes in the liver. And if we don't do this in this order, pushing the liver system too soon will increase toxins in circulation which may not be able to leave the body, and that creates those systemic symptoms of toxicosis. Um, this is known as a detox reaction or a Herxheimer reaction. It's a lot of headaches, pain, achy, shaky kind of feelings, almost bordering on a fever. Um, some books and websites will say, oh, that's how you know your detox program is working, but that is incorrect. That means your detox may be pulling toxins out of the body, but they're not leaving the body, and detox reactions are not a good thing. Following a properly designed protocol, they are not necessary. On a timeline, this is how we lay out a basic detoxification program. On average, about two and a half weeks is required. Uh, the first start uh, the first step, day one there, it starts as to opening the GI tract. When the GI tract is eliminating more frequency, then we move into both detoxifying the colon and opening the kidney and urinary tract. That step two and three period will last five to seven days. So we're maybe about 10 days into the detoxification here. Then we add in the detoxifying the liver process for about a week ideally and in parallel with all of that we do what i call supportive therapies and a special diet to help all of this work better if you are going to proceed and work with me on a detoxification program i give you some very detailed instructions and coaching to help make all this sensible and easier to accomplish Real quickly, opening the GI tract consists of using some stronger herbal laxatives and a certain amount of soluble fiber. We're going for a, a nice bowel movement equivalent to once per day for each normal size meal. If you eat three meals a day, ideally you'd be having three bowel movements a day. The transit time should be from one meal to go in the mouth and out the other end should be between 12 and 24 hours. Um, your frequency might be correct, but if the transit time is too long, that's a problem. So we work on that during this open the GI tract phase. Detoxifying the GI tract is done by including some detoxifying substances with the fiber. Bentonite clay and activated charcoal are the two that we traditionally use. 
while you're doing this, it will cause your stools to appear very black for a time. That will normally clear out back to normal two to three days after you discontinue this portion of the program. The charcoal and the clay will bind up the toxins that are being dumped through the bile and that are in the uh, fecal matter, and it will actually help pull impacted fecal matter, matter from the walls of the large intestine. Opening and detoxifying the kidneys and the bladder. Our goal is to accelerate urinary output to tonify and detoxify the kidney. The subsequent liver detox phase will be flushing large amount of toxins through the kidneys, and so those need to be able to handle this increased load safely. This is primarily accomplished through diuretic and regenerative herbs. We like to do this two ways. One is a tea. You drink four to six cups throughout the day. Also as a tincture, a, mix, a blend of herbs two to three times a day. Some of the major herbs we use in this uh, part of the program are listed here. Manzanita, dandelion leaf, corn silk, parsley leaf, horsetail, juniper berries, and the kidney rebuilding herbs are nutmeg seed, schizandra, and a little known herb called pellitory of the wall. So after all that, we get to the liver detox phase. The GI tract among three is opening and functioning well, as is the urinary tract. So now we go upstream and start pushing the body's uh, detoxication pathways in the liver. Low toxin foods, easy to digest foods, are what we're going to be having you consume during this to eliminate the amount of toxins coming in. And this is where the diet actually starts emphasizing leafy greens, both steamed and juice. That really helps uh, the liver detoxify. At this point, we generally discontinue the GI tract detox herbs and protocols, but we have to keep watching the bowel movement frequency. It may be necessary to continue some of these herbs during the first couple of days as we transition into the liver detox phase. The liver detoxification systems are known as the cytochrome P450 pathways, and they need some specific vitamins, minerals, and amino acids to make them work faster. Uh, the herbs that go along with this, I list, here, I list here, things like milk, thistle, burdock root, dandelion root this time, um, an herb called greater celandine, beetroot, fringe tree, globe artichoke, juniper berry, and manzanita again. Those last two are put there to keep the urinary um, tract working well. Some of the herbs generally used um, for the detox tea portion, which we like to see brewed as a decoction, meaning these are all actively boiled for 20 minutes or more. And when it's cool, then you go ahead and drink these. Pure water is very important to get enough of it in to help push the system along. Um, a rule of thumb, it's not a scientific law, just a general rule of thumb, about one half your body weight in pounds converted to ounces of water. So if you weigh 150 pounds, half of that in ounces is 75 ounces. So that's about two quarts and one cup. During the detox, you would need to be drinking at least two quarts of water spread out throughout the day. So as I mentioned earlier, the goal is to reduce the amount of toxins going in, and we support the liver and kidneys doing their jobs. The emphasis is on organic foods. I would read it as long as you're not bringing in toxins. So organic food is really important. Simple proteins, mostly plant-based, but some animal-based protein like turkey breast is, is one that's quite good. A lot of the um, fish proteins are simple and easy to digest. During a detox program is absolutely positively not the time to cheat a little on your nutritional plan.
All right, so let's talk about ways of getting high levels of high quality clean nutrients into you during this detox program. And that leads us right into juicing. So there's a couple ways people juice things. One is with what's essentially a really high powerful blender. It takes the fruit or vegetables, blends it into a slurry that comes out looking a lot like a smoothie. It includes all the nutrients and it includes all the pulp or the fiber. The other are a variety of different types of pulp extracting juicers that filter out the pulp but still give you the liquid portions, which includes the vitamins and minerals, the bioflavonoids, the carotenoids, and all the other healthy molecules in a plant. The reason we like in a detox program to be using the pulp extracting type of juicers is you don't have enough room in your stomach to hold enough juice that still has the pulp, i.e. blended fruits, to really push the detox pathways and provide you the high level of nutrients we're trying to get in. The fiber just takes too much room. It's, it's basically two thirds, three fourths of the volume of whatever fruit or vegetable we're talking about. And in some cases, maybe even more. So you need a pulp extracting juicer to do this well. Um, there's a variety of brands out there. Um, the one at the bottom on this, these pictures is a brand called Champion. I used to own a Champion. I owned it for about 40 years and it um, was still going. But when I moved the last time, I gave it away because I didn't want to take something that big and heavy. Um, the good thing about Champion juicers is that after a nuclear holocaust, you can go around to the ruins of the cities and find probably what are still fully functional Champion juicers. They're that bulletproof and bombproof. A um, little hard to use for some people because they're big and heavy and hard to move around. We have a different brand now, and as I record this, I don't even know what the brand is. We, we got it on sale. It's been a great juicer. We've had it for three years, and we love it. Um, so pulp extracting juicers. Save the green leafy stuff until later in the program when you do start pushing the juicers. These ju All these juices will tend to keep the GI tract moving if you move into that diarrhea stage it becomes necessary to kind of moderate how much juicing versus how much else you're doing. Um, daily juicing is important. Ideally, it would be fresh juice. You know, you juice it and immediately drink it, but that's labor intensive sometimes. But try not to save the juice you make for more than a couple of days. They, it will tend to lose the potency of its vitality and, and some of its nutrients. So juicing is phenomenal. Now I want to very briefly mention the supportive therapies that I have referred to. If you remember way back when we looked at the timeline flow chart uh, at the beginning of this little video. These are therapies intended to be used out throughout the entire detox program. They're mainly aimed at enhancing elimination from the secondary among trees, especially the skin and the lungs. Um, some of them will work to help push the primary among trees. Uh, the castor oil packs is what I'm referring to here. Um, basically the liver and GI tract. So deep breathing, hydrotherapy, alternating hot and cold applications of water in a particular way. Dry skin brushing, this is not exfoliating. We're not trying to scrub a layer of skin off. We're very lightly brushing up the legs, up the arms, towards the center of the torso, over the whole surface of the body, just before bed, because that stimulates the nervous, the, I'm sorry, the nervous system stimulates flow through the lymphatic system and pushes toxins out. Exercise is important. And of course, castor oil packs. If you decide to jump on board and do your spring detox with this program, I give out full detailed instructions on each of these, but these are some of the things that make the whole thing go better. That brings us up to a discussion we need to have about detoxifying the place you spend about half your life, which is your home. We sleep there up to a third of our life, meals, basic life when we're not all 
out of the home working or attending school is our home. And some of the greatest potential for risk of toxin exposure can occur in our homes if we aren't careful. Toxins are in building materials. A lot of formaldehyde in flooring and insulation, for example. Cleaning products, body care products, laundry products, toxic ingredients in foods and beverages. And even if all of these ingredients in these these products are legal, it doesn't mean they're completely safe. Um, the building products your home was built with you're probably stuck with, and the best way to deal with the outgassing of formaldehyde and other toxins is probably going to be air filters in your home. I will have a, a short video soon about the air filters I recommend, or in the meantime, I don't know when that will happen this month or next, but call me. The... Uh, Key for all these other areas is you need to start switching to products that are made from much safer ingredients that are actually <clears throat> effective. <clears throat> I have spent the last 20, 30 years trying just about every product line out there, every type of product that's supposed to be a natural, non-toxic cleaner, that you could find in supermarkets and sometimes big box stores and the vast, vast majority of them just don't work. They don't cut it, in other words, especially where it is grease. I can't tell you how many cooking utensils, cooking pots and pans, mixing bowls, baking dishes, we eventually had to throw away because we just could not get the grease off using the safe products. And it doesn't have to be that way. So what actually works? Well, I finally found a company called Melaleuca. Um, they're called the Wellness Company. I have tried all, just about everything else out there, and the products, especially the cleaning products from Melaleuca work really, really well. I don't know how, I, they've been around a long time. I don't know how I've been in this industry for so long and didn't know about Melaleuca, but they're, they're great. I just love this, this company. Um, they are a shopping club. They're very similar to Costco or Sam's Club in that regard. Membership is restricted to those who have been referred by already existing companies, or I'm sorry, already existing customers. Their products are concentrated. They work really, really well. If you would like to learn the details of Melaleuca and how you can become a customer, I will be happy to set up a meeting. You, you can set one up with you as an individual, um, in person or Zoom. If you're here in Western Montana, just come on by. We'll set up a time. Um, and I'll explain how Melaleuca works. It's very simple and straightforward. I can tell you that long term, because the products are concentrated and most of them you end up diluting at home, um, so you're not paying for and paying for the shipment of water. Many of the modern cleaning products at big box stores and supermarkets are 80 to 90 percent water. Um, that over a long period of time, over um, months to years, you will actually spend no more and probably less than you do now on cleaning products uh, because of that reason. And it um, is going to save you money and it will be far, far healthier. So this is a switch to safer healthier home products it's a lifestyle upgrade for sure um, and you're just changing where you shop it's gonna save you so much money in the long term and make you and your family healthier so if you're at all interested or concerned about your health and toxins in your home please contact me so the conclusion is there's a lot of environmental toxins. We've made a very polluted world for ourselves. And until we um, take back control from the politicians and require um, the companies who made the messes to clean them up and stop all the pollution, we have to be very proactive at the individual level, the family level, small community level, and clean it up ourselves, clean up our own little world. And that's what this video, I hope, has shown you the need for. 
I hope you are prompted to watch this and then contact me to do a more carefully choreographed detoxification program. And the final slide here coming up in a couple slides will have all my contact information. And I hope to hear from you soon on that regard. All right, just to let you know what else is going on, here are some of my upcoming and ongoing events. The first Thursday series um, coming up in February, February 1st, Weight Loss That Works. March 7th will be the big three causes of ill health and what to do about them. This is based on my book, Heal Your Life, Heal the World. April 4th, Syndrome X Diabetes and modern myths of blood sugar control. I am still amazed after all this time of how much misinformation is being spread by the media, by the conventional medical system. It just is amazing. <clears throat> Later this year, probably starting in the spring, I thought I had the dates all figured out and now I'm having to re-juggle uh, a few things. So this is um, longevity program version 2.0. I've taught this before. The videos from the first class um, are available. You can access them on my website um, for a fee. It's included with all my health and wellness plan memberships. So uh, by all means, uh, contact me if you're interested in this. Uh, every Wednesday night, um, a few exceptions aside, if I have to travel or something, or the weather's bad, which happens sometimes in the Rocky Mountains in Montana in the winter. Um, Qigong for health and longevity. Um, this is an internal or soft style martial art, and the techniques I'm teaching here are for health, consciousness, and longevity. You can attend in person, you can attend online. It's $25 a month or $5 a session, available online. Um, and so again, contact me. The Qigong classes are included with all wellness plans and all of my Patreon memberships. Speaking of my annual wellness plans, uh, you can click over to my website. There is a section there that explains this in a little more detail. Bottom line is this is where doctors who care are starting to work because we're tired of seeing people mistreated by the conventional medical system. <clears throat> I've been told now in the last, uh, let's say, three months, at least four times people were told um, when being referred to specialists that it was going to be a one-year wait time to go see a doctor. I've been told it's a three-month wait time for an acute condition. Oh, my child has an ear infection. Great, I can fit you in in three months. It's like I was just flabbergasted. That's a huge problem. It drives people to ERs and urgent cares where you may never see the same doctor twice. And they're trying to get as many people through there as possible. You don't receive actual health care. The wellness plans include access to all of my health education events free of charge. Just show up or register. And if you want to know more, again, look at the website, call the office. I do have a more involved package than just what's on this uh, one slide here that I can send to you. So this is, in my opinion, by far the most cost effective way you can get health care for yourself and your family and get all the health education benefits that go with it. All right, last slide in this presentation. I'm Dr. Cage. I hope to be able to be of service if you require medical care. Um, I do an awful lot of work in person right here in my Hamilton Wellness Clinic. I also do a lot of work online via Zoom and or other video conferencing formats. A lot of work can be done long distance. A lot of times you don't need to come in and have blood drawn or a physical adjustment or physical exams done. That's pretty hard still to do long distance. But the other 80 or more percent of what needs to be done to get you healthier, I can. And I do work with people all over the world in that regard. So I, I hope this was informative. I hope you like it. 
I welcome email questions and comments, so please feel free.